Welcome back, everybody. We are back together here with another video. We just finished watching Uncle Tom Part 2. This is the sequel to uh, Larry Elder's uh, documentary series. Um, I really did enjoy it. What are your initial thoughts on it right after seeing it? I think it's very educational. There's like quite a lot of things that I don't know about. Yeah, I believe it's actually probably more educational than the first one, because the first one actually really kind of focused on the people in the series mm -hmm. and their bat stories. But this one was more tied to more historical perspective when it actually comes to mainly Marxism in America. Yeah, Th that, that's what it really does focus on. Like Larry Elder is like barely in it at all. He, I mean, he's mm -hmm. in it, but very little. They focus mainly on the time period between, I would say, like the 1920s and the civil rights movement. And I believe there's going to be a bit of controversy here for some people when it actually comes to Martin Luther King Jr. Because Martin Luther King Jr. is looked at as an American hero, right? Mm -hmm. Civil rights hero, right? Yeah. They are critical of um, Martin Luther King. Yeah, and at that, the end. Well, yeah, several times I would actually say no. Well, at it, the end they showed the, for a clip of what he said. Yeah, what he, what he said was really based in socialism and Marxism. Yeah. That, Talking about taking from the people and redistributing wealth. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm completely against that. I'm completely against socialism and communism in general. Now, Brandon Tatum said, hey, hey, Martin Luther King was a socialist. He he said that directly in the video. Now, that shouldn't be too much of a surprise if you actually watch his videos on YouTube. And um, because he's he's mentioned that um, Martin Luther King was a uh, was a socialist. But when it comes to this documentary here, it really is about the rise of Marxism on black people. Yeah, but it also they show a little bit about like in uh, North Korea and you know, China, you know, yeah. Mao. Yeah, you Mao see time. Mao in this because yeah. um, uh, the socialist on uh, W.E. Du Bois, he's a socialist. He actually started the NC NAACP along with um, another white lady that's a socialist and a couple of other people. The N NAACP was started by socialists. Yeah. And here, here's the thing. They do a good job of actually pointing out that it is normally a white socialist behind these movements. So they were trying to make the comparison with um, Black Lives Matter. Everybody knows that Black Lives Matter was started by three lesbians and they're trained Marxists. In this one, they actually tell you about the guy who actually trained Patrice Cullors. His yeah. name is uh, Eric Mann. He's a, uh, a white American uh, Jewish guy. He's a radical. He trained Patrice Cullors in Marxism. Now, a little backstory in case people don't know what Marxism really is. In a nutshell, I don't want to go into every single detail here, but basically, you know, Marx wanted like equal uh, redistribution of uh, wealth. He believed that the workers should actually take over from their oppressors who were actually own the business. And they would actually have this like Marxist revolution and take over. And we've seen Marxist revolutions, uh, China, Russia, North Korea, um, Vietnam, all these revolutions. And now they're run by communists. Now, Soviet Union doesn't exist anymore, though. Well, for me, I just think it that way because... I'm not very political, so I kind right. of think it like it's like a group thing. Like when we do like group project, you know, where like, well, I usually do the bath part. So, yeah, I but, mean, yeah, we both but, we're uh, both educated and we both done yeah, group projects but before. For me, like in school, like if I do the project, like I'm usually do the math. It never fails. Anyway, but like but there's always one yeah. lazy person in a group. Yeah, but there's also like one person like who should help me do the 
other graph and stuff. But uh, you know the calculation is quite long, even though right, there's right. a lot of like computer stuff. But also do the research. But the other person who's supposed to help me, you know, just you know, sometimes they don't, you know, do the work, and I have to do the extra work. And plus, but you know, at the end of the project, like. The gray, if it's good or not, you know, everyone yes. gets the same gray. That, it, that's a good comparison yeah. to Marx's theory, you know, equal outcomes yeah. versus equal opportunities. Yeah. So good. that's a good point right there, because and when I was an undergrad, I did a lot of um, a lot of group work mm-hmm. and everybody gets the same in a group. Anyway, it gets the same grade, even if you didn't contribute as much. So. Yeah. You may give a lot of ideas. I may give a lot of ideas, and another person gives little to no ideas. Yeah, that that's a problem but right they there. Get the same grade. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, back to this documentary though. Um, it's kind of eye opening here. Like one thing they mentioned about was the uh, the Tulsa massacre. I believe nineteen twenty is when it happened. It was a race riot in uh, Tulsa, mm-hmm. Oklahoma. I believe that was one of the few uh, black Wall Streets and it was a race r- race riot. Like 300 uh, people got killed. And I believe they don't mention this, but um, from what I know, it was like black people and white people that got killed in that. But they showed a clip of Joe Biden talking about, oh, we're marking the 100th anniversary of um, the Tulsa massacre. You know, thinking, oh, black businesses got destroyed and everything. They point out something very, very important in this documentary. Like three, four years later, guess what? They rebuilt the whole thing. Black people rebuilt it. They didn't make any excuses. They didn't say, oh, I'm oppressed. I can't do this. No, they rebuilt it. Mm -hmm. You never hear about that. Because they still want to continue to push this narrative that, hey, this whole cultural Marxism thing is really, really influenced the black community a lot. And the first thing, first thing they actually point out is what? Marx was against religion. When yes. religion dies in a black community, more Marxism starts to take over. Mm-hmm. They take over to school. Our education system is heavily influenced by leftist Marxists in the school system. Why do you think they're trying to push um, all of this uh, woke stuff in the schools? It's cultural Marxism. Yeah, and they said, well, um, I know in biology department is real big on evolution. Yeah, they mentioned Dar- yeah, Darwinism in this. You hardly, you know, mention, they hardly, you know, mention about God and stuff. Except in the Christian school, then, you know. Yeah, Christian schools are different, but public schools. I mean, schools. They, in Christian school, they, you know, we also have to learn, like, evolution and stuff, but they also explain the creation and stuff. So. Yeah, it's, ma- it's mainly going to be creation focus yeah. versus what they're actually pushing in the public school system. Because they also brought up a good point that um, the school system wasn't always run by the government. It was actually, you know, your local community, your mm-hmm. churches. But in the modern era, especially now, the church has been demonized. And when it comes to black people... We used to go to church every Sunday. We went to Sunday school and they mentioned, hey, even if you couldn't sing, you have to be in the choir. I was in the choir in church. Mm -hmm. I did not want to be in the choir. Um, I could sing, but I didn't really want to sing. I played instruments. That's what I wanted to do. But they didn't really have a band. And when I was in middle school, high school, elementary school, I played instruments. That's what I like. I didn't really care for singing that much. Mm -hmm. But we had to do it anyway. And God was. Up front. Now, if you went into most black people's homes when I was um a little kid and during my mom's generation, you would always see a picture of Jesus. Mm-hmm. But now they have removed God from schools. And now Marxism takes over because the destruction of God is what Marx wanted overall. He was an atheist. Yeah. You look at all of these um authoritarian uh, communist countries, China, no religion, North Korea. No religion. No. Vietnam, no religion. Well, in um, I think in Hong Kong they have still like religion, but then like um, 
you know, the Cummins party that, I mean, they put like a video like, inside the church. So, of course, you know, you they're going to have like indoctrination stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure they have like Christian over there, but, you know, people still go to church, but it just, they have to be careful what they have to say. Right, right. Yeah. Censorship. I mean, we're seeing censorship now already uh, going on. I mean, the midterm elections are coming up and um, Twitter's going to be uh, clamping down. And we know that Twitter is definitely ran by a bunch of communists, of course. Suppression mm-hmm. of speech, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I thought Elon Musk was buying Twitter. We don't know what's going to happen with that. So we don't know what's going to happen. But also, when it comes to this, if you watch all the way to the end, they do set up Uncle Tom 3. You notice that they said, well, this is for later or something like that, that they said it then after the Martin Luther King uh, speech right there. They mm-hmm. they said something. I don't know if you caught it or not. But it sounds like Uncle Tom 3 is actually going to be coming. I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, because the first one came out, I believe it was actually in 2020. Like I said, this is definitely a different format here. It doesn't focus on the people. Like A lot of the same people in the first one or in this one, but it's not focusing on them. It's more focused on yeah. the rise of Marxism in the black community. And man. But I like the way they explain... Um Booker T. Washington. Booker what T. He Washington, did. yes. And um, versus compared w. to W. E. Du Bois. Yeah. yeah, but then like they turn like Booker T. Washington as a villain yeah. and like the other because guys. Because he, he, he believed, now Booker T. Washington grew up in slavery mm-hmm. in the South. He started the uh, Tuskegee Institute. This man went into Harlem, bought up property. Now, Harlem used to be white. Mm-hmm. And he went up there and he bought property up there in Harlem and black successful people were actually coming into Harlem. How did Harlem fall? Marxism infl- infiltrating the black community, destroying everything. One of the biggest reasons why you see so much poverty out there is because of Marxism and socialism infiltrating the black community. They did a good, good job, a great job of actually um, pointing all that out. Now, W.D. Du Bois Mm-hmm. He didn't grow up in the South. He was born, I believe, in like Massachusetts. Yeah, and he, he was, was wealthy. He was a devout communist, and that's why you see him actually meeting up with um, with um, Mao and uh, these other uh, communists out there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the left loves W. E. Du Bois, but it is Booker T. Washington that really Booker you know, T. Washington believed in hard work. Now, one thing about Marx that they didn't mention, Mark, Marx was pretty lazy during his life. Pretty lazy. He he died well, he pretty got much his poor. his degree, right? Who, in, Marx? Yeah, in I don't. I don't think, no, I don't think Marx actually had a degree. He doesn't? No, I don't think so. But he, he collaborated with uh, Friedrich Engels, another uh, German, and they wrote the uh, Communist Manifesto. And that's what really influenced a lot of e- evil people like uh, Lenin mm-hmm. and um, Stalin and Russia, Mao. Mm-hmm. You know, basically, you know, Mao had his little red book, right? It was nothing more than a uh, communist propaganda. Yeah. I mean, Marx is was not a good person, but these people, man. And Mar- and here's the thing. Nothing to mention. Marx was Marx didn't like black people. He didn't. He did? No, he didn't. He didn't like black people. But Marx's theory has definitely infiltrated the uh, the pro-black movement during the 60s. All Marxist theory, the Black Panther Party, Marxists, all these groups, BLM, Marxists. Mm-hmm. They love Marxism. But all we got to do is just look what, and see right in front of us what's actually going on in the world. What's going on in North Korea? Those people are suffering over there. Yeah, and the president is having all the money. Kim Jong-un looks like he's never missed a meal. Nope. So it seems like communist is, you know, toward the rich and like the elite in the government. But de- definitely out here, a lot of these um, leftist Hollywood people, mm-hmm. 
they they're socialists. Like I, I talked about it yesterday in a video about um the Hulk actor, mm-hmm. Mark Ruffalo. That man is a, a devout socialist. He hates capitalism. He hates it. And he's out there and they talk about that stuff, how one of the um one of the um communists out there um actually said that um you won't be able to create communism in the West like over here through like um violent means. Mm-hmm. You actually would have to infiltrate another way. How do you do it? The school system, entertainment, Hollywood. A lot of these school boards are run by the left. Entertainment. A lot of, a lot of those actors, they supported socialists like Bernie Sanders. So. Now, no, I don't. Do they give out money to the poor? Just wondering. Who, who giving out money to the poor? The celebrity. The woke <laughs> celebrity. Well, the, these these socialists like Bernie Sanders. He owns two houses. He ain't selling that house and giving it to a poor person. It, these people are hypocrites. One thing about all these people, these uh, communist leaders, mm-hmm. they become authoritarians. They live a much lavish lifestyle, even though they say they actually hate capitalism. But even the um, the leader of Black Lives Matter got all that money, got super rich, became a millionaire through capitalism. They enriched themselves. Yeah, while they- the poor stay poor. Same yeah. thing. Same thing happened with Mao. So it's, you know, I heard, I always heard like in the past where like some people say like capitalism is just, you know, toward the rich, but it's well, really well, the socialists yeah. think that um the capitalists are oppressors, that they're oppressing people. Yeah, they only you know enhance the rich or something. Yeah, like but. When it like comes to the real story is like the communists. I mean, the government get all the money and you know. Yeah, communism has killed way, way, way more people than capitalists could ever could. More people have actually risen up and been successful through capitalism. It's just a fact. But yeah. communists, but, they just promise, you know. But never, you know, real They promise. never deliver. I mean, this whole communist utopia thing. Oh, everybody is going to contribute. We're going to redistribute all the wealth. And once we actually reach communism, then it's a utopia for everybody and work is optional. That's not realistic right there. For one thing, if they truly, if it was to truly work, every single person would actually have to buy into it. And that's not supposed to be any authoritarians. Now, Leninism comes in with the authoritarian. Lenin was a dictator. Stalin was a dictator. And they never truly ever reached any kind of utopia. Why? Because people are always starving under communism. It doesn't work. Just that simple. But let's uh, wrap this up. How would you actually rate this? I'll rate it as... um, Like uh, A, B, C. I I think it's A. I think it's A. A. Definitely A. Um, that's going to wrap it up, guys. Um, great episode here. I like talking about Uncle Tom. I love Larry Elder. I love, man, he is just so great. So great. Yeah. But um, let's say goodbye to everybody, and we will catch you on the next video. Goodbye. Have a great day, guys. We will see you next time. <laughs>